Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, apologies about that, and also if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well, if there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision-related video here on my channel, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Eurovision Song Contests over the past decade or so and telling you some of the performances that I think have been underrated or underappreciated in that time. Now the inspiration for this video comes from an article that I saw online earlier today posted on weeweeblogs.com and it says five underrated stage shows at Eurovision that we don't talk about enough. That's the name of the article. It was written by Matthew David Andrews. And I'm just going to go through that article a little bit first to give you an idea as to what this video is essentially going to be about. Now, they've mentioned just five performances. They've gone with Norway 2014, Silent Storm by Carl Espen, which is a song that I'm very indifferent about. But it was quite nicely done. Smoke machine, guy pretending to play the piano, nice vocals, very atmospheric. Maybe we should be talking about that song and that performance in particular a little bit more. I don't know. They also mentioned Croatia last year. That was Albina, TikTok, of course, controversially didn't qualify, even though it was a qualifier with the jury and the public, just not overall when the points were added together. Uh, that performance was quite futuristic in a way, in terms of the outfits. Um, it definitely felt very sort of new age and maybe a little bit otherworldly, if that's the right term to use. Certainly, I think it was a very strong performance. And that stage show sort of helped me enjoy the song as a whole a lot more. Because before the contest, I didn't really have a strong opinion on it. But after the contest, I enjoyed it so much more, and the staging played a big part in that. Should it have qualified? Yes, I probably think so. But anyway, moving on. That was a very good stage show. Uh, then they've gone for Belarus 2009. This is Eyes That Never Lie by Petr Relfimov. He was in this all-white outfit, the sort of long blonde hair. Um... Something I don't like about this performance, and I didn't like it at the time, is that you have a guy, I think it's a guy, off to one side, and he's just sort of thrashing about with this sheet over him. I never really liked that, but there is a really fantastic camera shot in this performance. There is a video, whether it's still online or not, I don't know, but there is a video showing you how they did this, where the guy with the camera is running up towards the stage from pretty much right at the back of the arena, and then dashes onto the stage and pans around Petter. It's a really fantastic shot, and we don't see many things like that these days in Eurovision. It was really well done. Um, still, that's quite an interesting pick, but there we are. Uh, we also have La La Love for Cyprus in 2012. That's Ivy Adamu. This was really good. They had the sort of platform, which looked as though it was made of rocks or books, something like that, can't quite remember. A little bit of choreography, really nicely done. Ivy was there with her crew of girls. It was good stuff. And then, and I'm really glad they mentioned this, and I won't talk about it much here because I'll be mentioning it again in a bit, it's Belgium 2016, What's the Pressure by Laura Tesoro, which for me is just one of the best stagings we've had over the past few years. Absolutely. It elevated that song to new heights. And if the staging hadn't been that good and that well executed, Belgium not only probably wouldn't have finished in the top 10 in the final, they might not have even made the final in the first place. So there you go, that's the article. It is online. Let me get rid of that now. So I'm going back to 2013. Next year will be a decade since the Malmö contest. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the participants in any given year and maybe select three or four entries that I think had pretty good staging, performances that I've kept going back to. I think that's a really big thing. If you keep going back to watch a performance, then clearly it's a performance that's really doing the business for you. Uh, and certainly there's several of them over the years. I've actually got a playlist, a private playlist on YouTube of my favourite Eurovision performances. I probably should have loaded that up. Never mind, let's take a look. 
um, 2013 then, you see a lot of people might say, for example, Montenegro. I'm looking at Montenegro here, Igranka Husi. Didn't qualify, but that song was fairly popular at the time. Would have qualified if 100% public vote. They had the astronaut helmets on. You know, a lot of people might say that's quite an underrated performance over the years that's been a bit forgotten about. And that's the sort of thing I'm going for here. What performances have just sort of faded into the background a little bit over the past decade? Well, I've always really liked Spain 2013. That's ESDM, Contigo hasta el final, with you until the end. 25th place, 8 points. The result doesn't really matter here. It's the performance, and I've really got to try and remember these from memory. Lead singer in the yellow dress barefoot, the two guys in the band either side of her. A uh, little bit of pyro. She went on the runway towards the end of the song. And there's this really beautiful moment that sticks in my head. And I think this is why I've always enjoyed the performance. She interacts with one of the lights that's come down from the arena ceiling. And it turns yellow and then they all go back up in yellow. And there's this beautiful shot of the arena. And she dashes back to the main stage. I just thought that was a really, really beautiful moment. Really looked great on TV and everything and that's maybe why I've gone back to that performance many times over the years. Is it underrated? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Nothing incredible but for me one that I've always quite enjoyed. Um, then we've got Iceland. Eithoringi with Jägaulif, I Have a Life. 17th place, 47 points. That's an underrated result. But this performance was just so strong, so effortless, so powerful. I really do think the power in this song really came across with the staging. He was dressed very smartly, the long hair, a couple of backing singers. They had this sort of wintry, cosy, Northern Lights-esque theme to the backdrop. I can't really remember it, but it just looked really atmospheric, really beautiful. And there's this great shot right before the final chorus kicks in where the camera pans out and you've got the white light streaking across the arena. That was beautiful. And then the very last shot where the camera tracks his arm and he closes his hand into a fist. That final note. Mmm. Packs a punch. Really, really fantastic. Really lovely. Really beautifully done. Um, Belgium. Roberto Bella Rossa with Love Kills, 12th place, 71 points. That was pretty good as well, but the choreography, eh, maybe it's not that brilliant actually. Not bad, but certainly I think um, the countries that I've just mentioned, Iceland in particular, stand out a bit more for me. Yeah, some people might say the Netherlands for its beautiful simplicity, that was a nuke of course. Could say the same for Italy and Marco Mengoni. Malta, Gianluca with uh, Tomorrow, finished 8th, 120 points, did very well with the juries. That was pretty good staging. They went for this sort of park bench. And Gianluca was there with his buddies and they were having a good time and the lyrics were on the backdrop. That was quite well done. That's a little bit underrated, you know. I think the staging really elevated that song and ensured that it got you know, a top 10 finish, perhaps. Um, yeah, Norway was pretty good. Some good shots in that. Yeah. Maybe not too many from 2013, but out of the ones I've mentioned there, I think Iceland really very powerful. Really nicely done. Let me know your thoughts. Moving on, 2014. I should be making a note of these, but I can't really be bothered. Uh, 2014, come on. The page is taking a while. Copenhagen this was. At the B and W halls. Here we go. Um, okay. I really liked Israel. May fine gold, same heart. Didn't qualify, but I thought it was really good. Mainly because of the light show, more than anything else. Okay, 2014. Malta was quite nice. That was firelight. Uh, Greece had the trampoline. United Kingdom, that was Molly Smitten Downs with Children of the Universe. That was the last song, finished 17th with 40 points. 
they went for this well what i remember about it most is that moment where you've got the lanterns on the backdrop floating up that was really nice and then you had the falling rain pyrotechnic didn't like her outfit at all looked as though she'd killed a lion for it um but yeah that wasn't bad it wasn't quite as good as it needed to be absolutely poland had the women churning the butter i'm surprised that wasn't in the article actually that's certainly some memorable staging uh donatan and cleo for poland 2014 14th place 62 points that's quite memorable staging with the sort of somewhat traditional imagery and the red color scheme and the choreography yeah a lot of stuff was really working with that one poland 2014 is a good shout switzerland that wasn't bad sabalta hunter of stars finland soft engine that was really good with the swirling lights um spain yeah that was yeah that was very very simple ukraine with the hamster wheel Armenia, to, certainly in terms of the backdrop for that performance and the light show, that was really, really fantastic. And then the Netherlands, well, the Netherlands staging I could rave about until the end of time. It's probably the best staging I have ever seen with any performance in the years I've been watching the contest. Not an exaggeration. It is so up there for me. Quality in every department. But if we're sticking with that mantra underrated underappreciated staging mm. i don't know i think poland 2014 is a really good shout because i don't see many people really talk about that song anymore and yet i remember when it was chosen announced rather as the polish act and song for 2014 people were saying oh my god this is going to be poland's best result for years and it sort of was and it would have done even better had the jurors been on board with it yeah I might say Poland. Yeah. Malta. Yeah, I'm going to go with Poland. Why not? Uh, moving on. 2015. I am aware this could be a long, rambling video, but bear with me. Uh, this was the Vienna contest. Um, hmm. Okay. Ireland was really nice. That was very simple. Molly pretending to play the piano. A couple of backing singers. You had this sort of forest scene on the backing screen with light shining through the trees a little bit similar to portugal 2017 when salvador won a little bit similar uh, so ireland was really good uh, iceland had a really beautiful backdrop with the northern lights again didn't qualify okay and then in terms of the final um I don't think there's too many here at all, you know. Norway was really lovely. I loved the way they staged that, where we saw Merland. This was obviously a monster like me, finished 8th, 102 points. You have Merland at the start. Honey. Du -du 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 -du. And then we just see him for the first third of the song. And then the camera moves and we see Deborah Scarlet standing there with her sort of red hair. And the camera just moves around them. It's ever so simple nothing cluttered or fussy about this whatsoever that was really really good and estonia oh my god estonia admittedly my favorite song of the year but the staging i thought was really really terrific at Asti loud you might remember this they went for this sort of living room look and it was in monochrome pretty much this sort of grayed out look to the performance really really worked they won Asti loud by an enormous margin and then at eurovision 7th place, 106 points, that's a bit underrated if you ask me, but moving on. They had this sort of silhouette thing going on. And then at the end of the performance, Stig clears off. We don't know where he's gone, obviously it's just off stage, but he's disappeared from view. And a single tear runs down Alina Bourne's cheek. Oh yeah, that was really, really good as well. Because... Certainly in the second verse, you can see that they're sort of bouncing off each other. They're telling a story to each other through this song, through the lyrics of the song. Uh, I just thought it was really, really excellently done. So Estonia is a great shout. Um, yeah, I don't think there's many at all, actually, from 2015. But I think Norway and Estonia really hold up for me. I really do. And I've always quite liked the way that France's song was done. That was Nublier Pas. 
very few people talk about that song. In fact, I'm sure very few people in France even remember it themselves, and it was their entry. Moving on to 2016, a classic contest, I'm sure many will agree. Um, Iceland didn't qualify, perhaps the biggest uh, underrated non-qualifier we've ever had. Um, hear them calling Greta Salome, 14th place, 51 points. She had the scream that she had at the national final as well behind her, and the birds bursting from her chest. Really well done. I am amazed, even to this day, that it didn't go through. Um, what else have we got here? Well, in the final, my god, my god. Uh, Czech Republic, I loved how simple that was, and they went for this sort of pink-purple geometric design. And you've got the flowers on the backdrop. Really love the way that song ends as well. Really good stuff. Uh, Spain's staging, on the other hand, disappointed me. Georgia. Well, there's one I'm a little bit surprised wasn't on that Wee Wee Blogs list. Nika Kocherov and Young Georgian Lolitas. Remember that? Midnight Gold. Oh my God. Epilepsy Warning. With the flashing lights galore. Very, very different from anything else that year. Very different from anything we've had since, to be honest with you. This was really an assault on the senses, and nobody really expected it to qualify. And then it did, well, not brilliantly in the final, but 104 points, 12 from the British jury. <laughs> okay, 20th place. Yeah, I'm surprised that wasn't in the article, actually. I'm very indifferent on this song. I like it so much more than I used to. That's an absolute fact. But yeah, this staging was really something. Yeah, definitely. Lots of different camera tricks and quick cuts. And obviously all of the lights. Yeah, definitely Georgia 2016 might be, if we take a look at the past decade, one of the most underappreciated, if that's the term you want to use, performances we've had. Georgia 2016. Um... Italy had the bits and bobs on stage. Really liked that song. Wasn't such a fan of the staging. Um, Netherlands, yeah. But I suppose, really, it's got to be Belgium for 2016. There I am talking about Georgia, and it was very good. But Belgium... I'm telling you now, maybe you disagree with me, but I think... This was sensational. And the Wee Wee Blogs article says something similar to what I'm about to say to you now. Coming into the 2016 contest, Belgium weren't really fancied by many people. Laura had won the Belgian selection, and they had a little bit of a revamp of the song. More people liked it. But still, coming into the 2016 contest, it was a hit and miss qualify for a lot of people. And then the rehearsals began, and people said, wow, hang on a moment, this looks damn good, mighty fine. And then it qualified, and yes, it opened the final, but dear me, this was damn good. It really was. Elevated the song no end. And I'm telling you now, it's not my favourite of the 2016 contest. I think it's my number eight. But in terms of going back and re-watching a performance... I go back to this one every couple of months easily. It's so good. Laura looked fabulous. She looked damn good in that sort of silver outfit, the shorts, jacket. You remember this. And she's bopping about with her crew. And there's slick choreography swaying from side to side. And you've got that sort of retro look. Very vintage with the golds and the oranges and the yellows. Very sort of 70s disco, that sort of thing. And she went on the runway, and there's this camera shot that sort of pans around her, and you can see everybody in the crowd waving their flags. Amazing. Decent vocals, great energy, and I think she was only about 18 at the time. Ah, oh, fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Belgium 2016 is right up there for me. Completely agree with the Wee Wee Blogs article on this one. That is an underrated, underappreciated performance over the past couple of years. Yes, it was top 10, so the result wasn't necessarily underrated, but I think this definitely holds up. It, you could say it's one of the best performances of a song that didn't make the top five or something like that. Really, really fantastic. Juries loved it. Public, not quite as much, but really, really good stuff. And rumours are that Laura could be back for 2023. 
because I believe Belgium are going back to a national final. Not sure about that, but if Laura Tesoro is involved, I'll be paying attention. 2017, ladies and gentlemen, well, straight off the bat, Finland from the first semi-final, Norma John, male-female duo, you remember this, Blackbird, that very maudlin sort of miserable song. <laughs> 12th place, 92 points, should have qualified. They had this watery blue thing going on on the backdrop, and then it turned red for the final chorus. Guy pretending to play the piano, black outfits. Beautiful, haunting. Ugh! Terrific. Listened to it and watched it back fairly recently. Oh, man. Top, top stuff. What else have we got here? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, moving into the final. France was pretty good. It was just Alma alone on stage. But the backdrop, which sort of had these houses, and then the Eiffel Tower, and the way it sort of spun around... That was really well done. And the pattern on the stage floor as well. Very good. Very good. Um, Hungary. There's a song that I enjoy so much more now compared to at the time. Origo Yotsi Papai. 200 points exactly. 8th place. Fantastic for them. This was really beautiful. You had him in his outfit. And then you had a female dancer. Midriff exposed. Sort of swaying about next to him. And on the sort of B stage platform... You had another woman pretending to play the violin, and Yotzi's there having a great time, banging his instrument, can't remember the name of it. That was really beautiful. That was really good. Um, even Belgium. People slagged off that staging at the time. Blanche with City Lights. They criticised her, they criticised her voice, they criticised every damn thing about the song and the staging. And yet she finished fourth, almost third, 363 points. And even though she doesn't move... For that entire song pretty much. Black outfit. Sort of staring into the camera. Yeah. That, that was good stuff as well. Really good. And Portugal. Well that's not underrated or underappreciated. Because it won by a mile. But it's worth mentioning. Mm. I think Finland definitely. Just really beautiful. And the UK. I haven't even mentioned the UK. Lucy Jones. Never give up on you. Yeah, the UK went big for the staging this time. We had that sort of seashell structure. Lucy Jones was there in the middle of it. Reflections everywhere. And these pulses of gold light coming out from the bottom of the stage and across the backdrop. And then you had the pyro near the end. There's another, I keep using this word, but there's another beautiful staging. Executed very, very well. And you're telling me 111 points, 15th place, barely anything from the public that year? Absolutely atrocious stuff. But United Kingdom, that's fairly underappreciated staging right there. France, Hungary. Yep, Finland. Moving on. 2018. Oh, there's some gems here, ladies and gentlemen. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments. Should say as well. Links in the description to my other social media pages. Check them out if you so wish. Um, from semi-final one, I won't mention Belgium, which is my favourite of 2018, because the staging was a bit of a letdown. Not awful, but a bit of a letdown. Same with Macedonia. Bit of a letdown. Switzerland, I thought, was great. The flair. The drummer doing his thing. Uh, the lead singer. Corin, if I recall correctly, of Zips. Oh my god, she looked amazing. And there's that bit where she walks around the front of the stage. Some great camera shots. She goes over the bridge as well. That was good staging. Really liked that. Underappreciated. Uh, semi-final two, Malta was really good. You had Christabel and you had the screens that sort of formed a box around her. And lasers, we don't get them at Eurovision too often, do we? But we had lasers and flames. Juries loved it. They love a bit of Malta. Public less so. Don't love a bit of Malta. Uh, but yeah, Taboo, that was pretty good stuff. And then in the final, oh, there's definitely one song here I'm going to talk about. Uh, Hungary. I remember at the time, AWS Vishlad Nyar, people were raving about that. The press, I remember Wee Wee Blancs themselves, saying that this was the bee's knees. Top quality stuff. And in the end, 21st place. Okay, not brilliant. But certainly that staging and that energy, oh, through the roof. Um, oh yeah, France was good, Madame Monsieur. 
That was really beautiful. Lithuania, Eva with When We're Old, very touching. So, so minimalistic. That moment at the end where she sort of meets her husband. Was it her husband? I think so. I'm not sure she's still with him. Doesn't really matter. But I think it was her husband at the end, and that very beautiful moment where they clasp hands. That was really great. Albania, that was really nicely done as well. Mainly that's all about the vocals, though. Moldova, oh yeah, my god, it all comes back to me now. Doridos with My Lucky Day. I'm surprised that wasn't in the article I read earlier. That's some impressive staging. Moldova can do staging very well, you know. And this had the doors, and the band was sort of moving backwards and forwards on stage, and then at the end we saw that actually there were doubles, and there were six of them, and then they started having a boogie. Oh yeah, that was good staging. That made the song so much better than it actually was. You take away that staging, nowhere near as good. Denmark, with the flags and the sort of Viking theme, that was really, really powerful. Estonia, Elena in that light-up dress, with the projections rather, that was really, really good. Nobody really talks about that anymore. Germany, with the backdrop and the uh, images that were displayed behind Michael Schulter, the photographs, and then it turns red at the end. That was so great. And that song finished fourth, almost third. I don't see many people talk about that German entry anymore. And the way it was presented in particular. Really, really good. Oh, man. But I think the two that are standing out the most from me from 2018, Ireland and Portugal. Ireland had Ryan O'Shaughnessy with Together, and you had the two male dancers, and the Narnia lamp, and the bench, and the fake snow, and Ryan pretending to play the guitar, and I must say, the backing vocals in that performance were really good. That's a complete side note. You had the woman off to one side pretending to play the piano. That was really well done. Really well done. Some people said at the time, Ireland's only in the final because of the gay love story. No, it's in the final because the staging's bang on the money, and also it's a damn good song. Really good stuff. 16th place, 136 points. This was one of the favourites to win. Yes, it was. On the day of the 2018 final, Lithuania were up there in the odds. Great staging, just mentioned that. And Ireland were up there as well. Oh, man. That's good stuff. I've gone back to that performance many a time. And then Portugal. Oh, don't even get me started on this absolute shite. How on earth did this song finish last? I'll never know. Oh, it's boring. No, no, no. There's quality. There's a difference. O Jardim, Claudia Pasquale's Aura. I loved how intimate this was. That's the really... Best way to describe it, I think. Intimacy. Uh, you had Claudia with the pink hair. She doesn't have that anymore. Uh, but the pink hair and Isaura came in towards the end. And they're just sort of looking at each other. And they're really feeling the melancholic vibes of the track. <sighs> and the sort of bluish tinge to the lighting as well at times. So good. So good. I've gone back to that performance many a time. I think it's my favourite Portuguese entry they've ever had. Well, to date in Eurovision. So good. Last place? I don't think so. I don't think so. 2019, I'm really trying to get through this now, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming up to half an hour in this video. Bear with me. 2019, well, I could mention Yotsi Papai again for Hungary. Azina Pam didn't qualify. Juries weren't so keen. 12th place, 97 points in that first semi-final. The golden lighting. He's sitting down at the start, if I recall. That was really nice. Um, Portugal, that was being raved about by people at the time. Certainly, a lot of Eurovision fans were saying that this was incredible stuff. Conan Osiris, Telemovesh, he was in that green outfit, the dancer with him in trainers, threw himself to the stage floor at one point. Yeah, nobody really talks about that song or performance anymore, do they? Not that I've seen. But that was... A really big deal at the time. Okay, in the final, Spain would have been better if they didn't have that massive puppet thing. Greece was a little bit disappointing with the flowery theme. Uh, France was pretty good with the dancers and the story behind those dancers and the newspaper articles on the backdrop. That was one of the favourites to win, 16th place. Whoops. Uh, Slovenia, intimate, but I've always said the guy didn't need to be there. He was just like staring at the girl for three minutes. Malta, that was really good with the sort of 
box they had on stage, and then right at the end, the camera pans out, and you see the whole thing. Great opener to the final. That was really good. Michaela looked great in the white outfit and the dancers bopping around her. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Iceland. Don't see many people talk about that performance anymore. Hat Rhythm and Secret. That was really good. Australia. Oh, my God. I wouldn't say that's underappreciated, but that's top-notch staging. Swinging about on the pole, you know. Oh, most people would have been crapping their pants, but Kate miller Heike was just having a blast. That was really good. North Macedonia. Best result they've ever had. Seventh place, 305 points. Proud to Mara Tedeska. She had the mirrors or whatever around her. That was really simple, really beautiful. Definitely the staging played a part in that song's success. Wow. Yeah. Even though North Macedonia did so well that year, I don't see many people talk about it. So maybe it's more of an underrated song, even though it finished seventh. Bit underrated, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe for me, Malta a little bit, maybe. Hmm, I don't know. Rattling through now, 2021, last year, it feels like a lot longer ago. Well, there's definitely one I'm thinking of. I've already spoken about Croatia from semi-final one. Uh, Ireland, I did like that, but it wasn't quite working in the way it needed to be. That was maps, of course. Yeah, semi-final two, Austria, Vincent Bueno, 12th place, 66 points, amen. He was on that sort of raised platform, and he moved forwards, and just, you know, white lights, not much else going on here. But the emotion, the atmosphere, the intimacy, again, I suppose, so good. That's a real underrated gem right there. Love it so much now. At the time, I was, yeah, so-so. But now I think it's a really top-notch performance. Denmark as well. Firo Flamme, Uwe Rospo Hinanden, 11th place, 89 points. Juries weren't so keen, public enjoyed it. This was good. Again, retro, a bit like Belgium 2016. Sort of video game, retro, pinks, blues, that sort of thing. Having a great time. The energy was infectious. That was good stuff, a bit underrated. In the final, um, Belgium. I loved the sort of dark, intimate atmosphere. Hoover Phonic, the wrong place. That was really good, very classy. Um, quite like Israel, Eden Elena with Set Me Free. Cyprus was pretty good, that was quite sexy. Good opener to the final. Um, Portugal, that was really, really good. The little screen that came down, and the person walking along, and then the lead singers walking along as well. That was so classy and effortless as well. That was really good. Really like Bulgaria, Victoria. She's on that massive rock. Somebody was inside that rock moving it about as well. That was really good. Oh, yeah. Hard to pick one. But certainly... Belgium a little bit. And Portugal a little bit. And even though Bulgaria nearly made the top ten... Also, in terms of the staging, atmosphere, all of those things combined... Maybe a little bit forgotten about these days. Even though it's only been about a year and a half. And Austria. And then this year, well, there's definitely one I'm thinking of here. Just waiting for the page to load up here, bear with me. So in the semi-finals, I know I've spoken about Ready. They've just released a new song, Denmark, the show, 13th place, 55 points. I just thought that was a blast. I thought it was really, really enjoyable. Simple, enjoyable, colourful, good stuff. Uh, could mention Austria, but uh, I don't know. I thought it was too dark. Um, I liked Malta, even though many people find it super, super cheesy. San Marino, I think people still talk about that staging today, so maybe not underappreciated. Uh, Ireland, same deal. In the final, I've seen a lot of people talk about France. That was Al van der Hez with Foulen. Uh, I liked the staging, but I've seen some people say it was messy. I've seen some people say it was forgettable. I don't know. 
I think maybe in a few years, if I film a video like this again, I might say, France 2022, definitely. Um, Czech Republic, oh, there's the one. There's the one, ladies and gentlemen. 38 crappy points. That's disgusting to see. This was so good. Yes, it was all about the lights, using every lighting rig in the arena. But I thought, actually, the whole performance was so good. Really like the design with the sort of statues on the backdrop that then blew up. Oh, yeah. Not such a fan of all of the electronic equipment and wires on stage. But the whole thing, still really great. Underappreciated. Underrated in terms of the results. Underrated staging. Um, Romania, that's grown on me quite a bit. Waving the handkerchiefs about. Strutting his stuff in the very tight trousers. Oh yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good stuff. Romania, definitely. Performing second and then doing that well, I suppose, to get that many points from the public. Yeah, really impressive. Um, Netherlands, I loved that staging. So, so simple, but I thought it was really effective. Same with Portugal. Mm. Yeah, I think Czech Republic, maybe Romania as well for me from this year. So there you go, massive ramble, but they are some of the, for me, underrated, underappreciated, whatever word you want to use, performances in Eurovision over the past 10 years or so. Let me know what your underrated, underappreciated, whatever word you want to use, performances over the past 10 years or so in Eurovision have been. Leave a comment, much appreciated, excuse me, dear me, and check out my other social media pages if you so wish. I will be filming more videos moving forwards. As I'm recording this video you're watching now, it's the 15th of September, and today apparently is the last day in which broadcasters can say to the EBU that they intend to participate in next year's contest. So I'm sure maybe within the next 24-48 hours or so we'll start seeing things such as this country announces intention to participate, that sort of thing. Anyway, the more the merrier. Until next time, hopefully the quality wasn't too bad. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Leave a like, share, all appreciated. It means a great deal. Until next time, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and bye for now.